Alright guys, it is a cool and wet start to week 43. Richard and I are out here cruising in the sand hills and uh, we're hoping to see some snakes today. So I'll keep you guys posted. First turp of the day, little eastern fence lizard. Stopped to flip a couple tanks because it's still overcast, but anyways, we're probably going to get cruising here in a second. So we started the day at about 9 a.m. and it's, uh, it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon and we haven't seen a live snake. We've seen one dead coach whip and that's been it. So. October, everybody, you gotta love it. Killing it. We herped. What is he even doing? It is a slider. Yeah. It's a big melanistic one. This guy's almost solid black. Are you laying eggs or what? I can't even tell. It looks like she just like came out of these leaves. <laughs> it was born from them. Anyways, we're gonna get the straw out of the road and keep moving. It is getting pretty late and we have still yet to see a single snake, so not the most successful day. So this turtle was not laying eggs because it is in fact a dude, but check out those claws. Gnarly. It's Darth Slider. Anyway, it's gonna get the scout the road. Well, the sand hills were terrible, inexplicably so. It felt great all day. But I flipped my tin here at the house yesterday, but I'm gonna do it again. Sometimes you'll find stuff the next day, even if you didn't find stuff the day before. So I'm gonna flip it, um, just for lack of anything better to do. And then I'm probably gonna get some sleep because I've been up forever. <laughs> Oh my god, the box turtle's still there. What? That's a hog nose. I just road cruised for nine hours to come home and flip this beautiful, solid black eastern hog nose in my yard. I flipped this tin yesterday, and uh, this box turtle was under it yesterday when I flipped it, but that was not. I'm at a loss of words. I put this tin here. I think I put it here maybe back in February. And uh, this is the first snake I've found under this piece of tin, an eastern hognose snake. I just road cruised for nine hours in perfect eastern hognose snake habitat in the sand hills of central Georgia. And I come home and flip this in my yard. I just, I can't believe it. Well, I took like two photos and he went straight into pooping all over himself and playing dead. Um, <laughs> goodness gracious, I'm glad I took in C2s. That is a big hognose snake. It's probably the biggest Eastern I've ever found. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous snakes. I, I haven't even flipped all the tin here. This is like the third piece of tin I've flipped, so. So it's getting kind of late this afternoon and the light sucks, but I'll give you another look at this hognose real quick. I washed him off, tried to wash some of the poop off of him after he, after he unleashed a fecal explosion on me. Anyways. Eastern hognose snake, black one, probably about three feet long, two and a half, three feet. One of the biggest ones I've seen, but just my mind's blown. I think this is a female, which means there's hopefully babies here, but unfortunately she played dead on us pretty fast. A lot of times Easterns will do this and it's hard to get them to come back to life. So uh, what I'm probably gonna do is put her back under a tin. I might see if she'll come back to life for us for a little bit, but otherwise I'm just gonna put her back and maybe I'll see her again later this week. See if I can show you guys. They have this enlarged tooth right there. You can kind of see it that they use for uh, popping toads. So their main prey item is, of course, toads. And what happens when you catch a toad and it gets defensive is it will blow up and inflate to make itself bigger than it really is by filling itself with air. And these guys will use those big teeth to pop toads so that they can swallow them more easily. Pretty cool. Amazing adaptations on these guys, just one of many, along with that upturned snout and this weird behavior where they just play dead. I mean, if you showed this snake to anyone other than someone who's seen them before, any herper, uh, you just showed this to any regular person, they'd think this is a dead snake, but it is in fact very much alive.
So this is the little micro habitat where I found the shed of the eastern hognose snake back in, that was probably back in August, I think, maybe early September. And uh, I flipped this religiously, hoping that he would turn back up. There's probably still little pieces of the shed right here. Anyways, here's a couple little pieces of that shed right there. And I flipped this religiously and uh, never found him until today. And I'm assuming this, is, this could be the same snake. It was on the other side of the property but it very well could be the same snake. It's about the right size, it's black, um, like I assume the one that that shed came from was because of how dark it was in coloration. Well, it's looking like that hognose is the only snake that I can find on the property today. Um, just, what on earth? It doesn't make any sense, but you know, sometimes it just it really goes that way. You have to cruise around for nine hours finding nothing just to come home and find what you were looking for the whole time in your own yard. So, it's happened before, it'll probably happen again. Anyways, um, I'm probably going to cut here to the next day that's actually herpable. Tomorrow is going to be cold and it's going to be raining all day long. So what I'm probably going to do is go out tomorrow night and look for salamanders. So I will see you guys then. That is the sound of rain. Finally, we've gotten a couple of days of rain here in North Georgia. Uh, it paid off yesterday with that beautiful hognose snake here at the house. So tonight's Tuesday. And Ian's coming over and we are going to spend this rainy night looking for salamanders here by the house. Alright guys, first salamander of the night is this little northern slimy salamander that just skirted off the road. This little guy is uh, pretty small for an adult slimy. They get a lot bigger. They're one of the largest plethodonids we have here. But pretty common on these warmer nights at least, so we're just going to make sure this guy gets safely off the road and keep walking. All right, so here's this first slimy salamander right here off the side of the road. And over here is our second salamander of the night. An even smaller slimy salamander. All right, guys, third salamander of the night is our third northern slimy salamander. This is definitely the biggest one yet. It's one of the larger ones I was talking about. Still not as big as they come, but good size. I've been in this road by my house for a while now, and this is the first salamander that wasn't a slimy salamander. I think we've seen it live all night. Anyways, this is a three-line salamander. Pretty cool. Stream-dwelling species. You see these guys in floodplains and along creeks, uh, along with a lot of the other Eurycia salamanders here in the southeast. But pretty cool. First one of these guys we've seen tonight, and the first one I've seen in a while. So I think I'm actually going to bust out my camera for this guy. All right, guys. So we were just walking down this road, and we hadn't really seen anything in a while, and something just fell out of this tree. I, it had to have been on the power line, dude. Or it, like, jumped out of the tree. Anyways, this gray tree frog just splatted onto the road from like, I, I'm not even kidding, like 15 feet above our heads. That was insane. <laughs> we both just looked at each other like, what just happened? Anyways, that is, that species number seven for the night, I think. Uh All right, guys, this right here is our eighth species for the night. This is a ridiculously tiny juvenile four-toed salamander. These guys are normally one of the more common species we see out here on this road, but uh, it's a little bit too warm tonight, I think, a little too early in the year, but this is the first one of the year here in October, so pretty cool. Uh, these are one of the more unique species of salamander we have here in the United States, but uh, you'll see more of these guys later in the year in my videos, I'm sure, so I'm just going to move this little guy off the road, and uh, we'll keep walking and see if we can find anything else. All right, guys, salamandering was a little bit on the slow side last night, but the good news is we got a lot of rain. And we're hoping that that will make flipping and hiking today decent. So we're going to start off here at the house. And then we're going to head out to a local area to do some habitat hiking and see how that goes. So I will keep you guys updated. All right, guys. It is Wednesday of week 42, maybe, I think. I can not I can never remember the week. Y'all know that. But anyways, we're out here hiking. We did a little flipping at the house this morning. You didn't see anything. Um, but we're out here hiking some habitat. It is a beautiful overcast, a little bit drizzly, a little bit of sunshine every now and then um, afternoon here. So feels like perfect conditions to hike some snakes, so we're going to get after it and see what we can find. All right, guys, Ian has our first herp of the day. Oh, he's... Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that thing is nice. Look at that. Pretty boy. That is a good-looking eastern box turtle. We saw a couple of these smashed on the road today, so it's nice to see a live one. Get some quick photos of him. Well, this guy was pretty content to let us get close to him, but that is a great looking eastern box turtle. Definitely one of the nicer ones I've seen this year, but we're just going to leave this guy right here and keep hiking. Reptiles are out at least, so we'll see what else we can find. Alright guys, we just found our first snake of the day. I thought it was a hognose at first, but I'm pretty sure it's just a skinny racer right here. 
Let's see if I can grab him. I, just, I don't know where his head is. Actually, I'm going to get a quick in situ photo. Actually, he's, he's flicking his tongue, so he's going to bolt. So I'm just going to... Oh. Just a look at the habitat we're hiking today. And this is granite flat rock here in the uh, mid-Piedmont. Got some nice uh, stumps and upturned trees around the edges that we're hoping to see snakes basking at. So, Got a racer so far, box turtle. And it feels pretty good. So we're going to keep at it and hopefully we'll turn up something a little more interesting. Well, guys, the snakes do not seem to be with us today. It has been... A lot of work today for very few snakes, and both of them are racers, amazingly enough. But um, right now we're headed out to try to find some marbled salamanders. Uh, it's the time of year when they're on eggs and you can find them under logs, waiting for the winter rains to come and flood their pools. Alright guys, well, <laughs> we did not see any marble salamanders either, so I guess we were just mostly taking an L on today. It wasn't too terrible, we saw a nice box turtle, a couple racers, and uh, of course found that hognose snake the other day, so it's been a decent start to the week. But I... Alright guys, well, we were headed back to my house after a long day of hiking and not seeing much, and there's a red-bellied snake in the road. It's pretty cool. Basically right here back in my house, and we finally find a snake that is not a racer, so I'll take it. Pretty cool. We're gonna get a couple quick pictures of this guy and get him off the road. All right, guys. Well, this is a, a pretty cool find in the day on and in the video on. I'll take it. So as it gets later in the year, you start to appreciate even these more common snakes more and more. But uh, gonna get this guy out of the road and call it a day. All right, we are going to check up and see if our hognose buddy is still hanging out. This is the piece of tin he was under a couple days ago. Um. No, he's not. Well, the hognose was not under the tin, but he is actually basking right at the entrance of this hole next to this other piece of tin that I haven't flipped in literally years. And on a whim, I just walked down here to see if he was down here, and sure enough, he's right here at the entrance of this burrow. So I'm going to get a couple NC2 photos and leave him there. It's going to get cold tonight, so he's going to need to be here so he can get underground. But pretty cool. Awesome to see this guy again. We're going to leave him alone. And uh, this will actually hopefully be the actual end of this video now that I've ended it like 10 times. So I'll see you guys next week.